benefit others. Of course, not everybody agrees that economies such as I have briefly described are a good thing. And the last thing I wish to do is to let politics intrude on the mathematical lecture. However, it is surely not controversial to state that individual selfishness, so to speak, can lead to public good. And I wish to argue that something similar happens in, ma in mathematics. Although individual mathematicians are motivated primarily by a subtle mixture of ambition and intellectual curiosity, and not so much by a wish to benefit society, nevertheless, mathematics as a whole does benefit society. I would now like to examine in more detail why this is. One straightforward answer is this. Mathematics is cheap, and occasionally produces breakthroughs of enormous economic benefit, either directly, as in the case of public key cryptography, or indirectly, as a result of providing the necessary theoretical underpinning for science. If you were to work out what mathematical research has cost the world in the last hundred years, and then work out what the world has gained in crude economic terms, then you would discover that the world has received an extraordinary return on a very small investment. And I haven't even mentioned the fact that those who engage in mathematical research also teach very bright students, many of whom do not themselves become mathematicians, but rather use their mathematical training in ways that directly contribute to the world economy. Taken as a whole, then, mathematics is undeniably important. However, a cost-cutting finance minister will notice a gap in the above argument. Might it not be possible to achieve the same benefits more cheaply? If the benefits of mathematics come from teaching at a few breakthroughs, while most mathematicians get on with their interesting but useless research, then why not cut the research funding to the useless areas and just support the teaching and the more practically oriented mathematics? One of my main objectives today is to expose the fallacy, or rather fallacies, that would lie behind such a proposal. The first one is the idea that it is possible to identify the areas of mathematics that will turn out to be useful. In fact, it is notoriously hard to predict this, and the history of mathematics is littered with examples of areas of research that were initially pursued for their own sake and later turned out to have completely unexpected importance. So I could mention the RSA algorithm yet again. A more fundamental example is the non-Euclidean geometry of Gauss, Bolyai, and Lobachevsky, which is internally consistent, despite such apparently paradoxical phenomena as the existence of triangles with angles not adding to 180 degrees. This paved the way for Riemannian geometry, which seemed to be an example of pure mathematics par excellence, until it turned out to be exactly what Einstein needed for his general theory of relativity. A recent and celebrated example is provided by the theory of knots. And let me briefly uh, say a little bit about that. It will be brief. So this is directed chiefly at uh, such non-mathematicians as there are in the audience, because it's quite a familiar example for mathematicians. So what I've drawn here is, what, uh, is a picture of what a mathematician means by a knot. Mathematicians don't uh, mean a long piece of string with a little sort of tangle in the middle. They mean exactly that, except that you take the two ends and fuse them together into the sort of loop. Um, so let's have a look. I've just drawn a picture of a few knots. Down at the bottom, if you've got uh, reasonable powers of visualization, you'll see that there's a knot that, in a certain sense, is less interesting than the other ones, because you can just untwist it, and it just turns into a loop. Um, and for that reason, it's sometimes known as the trivial knot or the unknot. Uh, over here, we've got some more sort of interesting, quite nice-looking ones. And the sort of problem that knot theory is concerned with is how to classify the various knots. Now, I've just said that this bottom one is basically the same as a loop. Now, this idea of basically the same is you take your tangled loop and you can, you're allowed to deform it, move bits of it around without breaking it at any stage. And uh, so then if you do that, then it's still really the same knot. Now, you could ask, is this knot the same as this one, for example? Could it be that if I cleverly manipulated this knot, I could turn it into this one? Uh, if anybody can give me a quick answer to that who's not an expert in the subject, I'll be extremely impressed, because actually it's a rather hard problem to do it. And uh, maybe just to illustrate that, I'll tell you that uh, this knot here is the same as this one here, and the others are all different. So it's not obvious just looking at them. Now, you could discover that this knot was the same as this one simply by messing around with this knot and moving it about and just trying to produce this one. And if you managed, you could say, lo and behold, the knots are the same. 
But the opposite problem, trying to show that, say, that one is not the same as that one, is much, much harder. You could try for, for 10 years to do it and fail, but that's no evidence that some cleverer person couldn't come along and do it instead. Now, that's all I want to say about that. The theory of knots is absolutely fascinating, uh, but the main point I want to make about it is that it looks rather like an amusing game. Let's just think about these knots and see which ones we can distinguish from one another. But as it happens, it turns out to have very deep and fundamental links with theoretical physics. This was discovered um, after some work of Vaughan Jones and Edward Witten and uh, came as a great surprise to mathematicians. So you have to be careful in thinking that a piece of mathematics is uh, just pure mathematics. So mathematicians can tell their governments if you cut funding to pure mathematical research, you run the risk of losing out on unexpected benefits, which historically have been by far the most important. However, the miserly finance minister need not be convinced quite yet. It may be very hard to identify positively the areas of mathematics likely to lead to practical benefits, but that does not rule out the possibility of identifying negatively the areas that will quite clearly be useless, or at least useless for the next 200 years. In fact, the finance minister does not even need to be certain that they will be useless. If, say, a large area of mathematics has only a 1 in 10,000 chance of producing economic benefit in the next 50 years, then perhaps that at least could be cut. You will not be surprised to hear me say that this policy would still be completely misguided. A major reason, one that has been commented on many times and is in a way implied by the subtitle of this conference, A Celebration of the Universality of Mathematical Thought, is that mathematics is very interconnected, far more so than it appears on the surface. The picture in the back of the finance minister's mind might be something like this. There are just a few areas of mathematics. Some of them are useful, some of them may be useful, and some of them are pretty obviously not useful. And they're all sort of reasonably well distinguished. So you know, the finance minister would say, well, let's cut that one and that one there, and maybe we can give some money to that one just to encourage it. And uh, the useful ones we like, you know, that would be the kind of uh, mental picture. Of course, there are many more areas of mathematics than that slide suggests, but uh, maybe the finance minister wouldn't know that either. <laughs> now, here's what I would think was a, a slightly more accurate picture, still actually an enormous oversimplification, but more accurate, something more like that. Well, you'll see that you can sort of see that some areas are a little bit denser than others. And maybe you could just about decide that you're going to call that an area of mathematics, but the boundaries are not terribly well defined. Just for the fun of it, let me just superimpose the uh, initial naive picture of mathematics onto this one. So there we are. So this uh, useless area over here, if you try to cut it, you're also cutting a lot of links to an area that's useful. And uh, so you run quite a serious risk by so doing.